tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello there, all over the world. Thank you for watching. You might have guessed that we're talking about a helix today and we'll animate a camera along a helix. Uh, this is the Wikipedia article, I guess, in Korean uh, about the helix. You have it in uh, all kinds of other languages. This is, of course, the English one because we we communicate in, in English here and uh, I'm uh, living in Germany and I've spent a lot of time in the UK and uh, some time with my relatives in the United States and this is a helix. Okay, the animation which you saw at the beginning and I played uh, in full length 1000 frames at the end is this one here. Let us roll exactly what you've just seen. And here you see these blue lines. They are the curves where the camera moves along. We're currently looking through that camera, the camera number one, that's the camera which I did render, and the camera uses these lines to create a motion. What kind of lights do we have in the scene? We have a uh, flat light, which is an area light, Arnold, and we have a mesh light in here, which is a torus, and uh, it's not going to be, it's not being rendered, it is just creating light. And in fact, I did animate that light. It uh, moves, I think, slightly up and down, uh, but it changes the intensity with the with a sine curve in time, which is not crucial here anyway. This is a Lambert shader, amazingly. It looks so complex, but it's a Lambert shader which I mapped with uh, a texture. Uh, very simple, it's a bulge texture actually with a little bit of randomness and uh, I use the same texture to create that uh, semi-transparency. What are the spheres for? Well to give you an orientation in the whole scene because at the very beginning which you see now uh, you don't see the floor with its texture and the texture on the floor by the way comes from Substance Alchemist. Uh, I did several tutorials about how to import, how to create sub Substance Alchemist textures and import them into Maya. Anyway, we're concentrating about uh, on the on the helix today, and when you press and hold the space bar in any kind of scene, you get this hyper. Uh, what is it called? The hyper. Don't remember actually. Um, you go to panels, and here you can select your camera. And let's select not the camera one, that's what we currently see, but the perspective camera, which is the standard camera we're dealing with. It looks quite similar, but it's quite different because here we can move out. And now we see the helix at work and we see the camera moving up along that helix. Where is it? Down there, you can see it now, it's slowly moving up. And if you create a helix by hand, so to say, with a few dents, um, not, not, not a precise helix, then you get a stuttering motion which is very irritating. Just try it out, create, just draw a curve and animate the camera along that curve. We'll use a more straightforward exploitation of a helix which is just sitting there. By the way, the value 1000 sits here and the camera ends the motion here at frame 1000. The default is 120 and I did another tutorial about uh, exactly this to change the U value as it's called uh, in order to change this from, for example, from 120 to 1000 uh, or any any other value and you can animate that motion. You could, for example, make the camera move up here, then go slowly back, then very fast to the end and then very slowly back to the beginning, etc. That's all very easy and uh, I put the link in the description below. Okay, how do we create this perfect shape here, this helix? And in order to show you that, I create a new scene. 
Let's go to Help, Find Menu, and type in Helix. And you can see Create Polygon Primitives Helix. So it's a surface, actually. We want a curve, but uh, we start with a helix as a surface. OK, Create Polygon uh, Primitives Helix. OK, uh, we could go to Create Polygon Primitives and Helix. Where is it? Down here. Here is the helix. Press F to um, frame the object. You can already see that's the shape you want. And uh, when you use Control A as a shortcut to get to the attribute editor, you can change the coils, number of coils, for example, more coils, less coils. Let's maybe use uh, 2.9 coils. Uh, you can change the height. You can change the radius. And you can change the width like this. So, for example, if you have a cone in the middle and you want to circle around that cone, that would be quite good. Maybe a little bit too close to the to the cone, so you could go for more width like this. Now the trick is to go to the components, right mouse click, and use an edge. If you use vertices, you get the points, you want the edges. And you can see this is a, a suggestion by Maya what we could select. What we do is we double click here or there, anywhere there, and the whole rim is being selected. You see all down there, they're all brown, that means they're selected. And keep in mind that's many, many faces. Now we go to modeling, wherever you are, you need modeling here curves and we duplicate the surface curves. We can stick to the default settings here and now watch what's happening in the outliner over here. I duplicate the surface curves now and we get lots and lots of curves within less than a second and you see it looks like a spiral, like a helix, exactly what we want but ex actually it consists of so many duplicated curves basically. Uh, keep the selection on. If you lose the selection just select all of the duplicated curves again and now you go to curves and you attach the curves to each other. One to the next to the next to the next etc. Now watch out what's happening in the outliner again when I use this command. They're deselected and all the way down there is a new curve and that's that one. And you see it in green here, and that's the curve we want. That's our helix. Now we can delete all the little curves here, plus the helix. We don't need them anymore. We have our helix curve here. And that's the whole process to create such a perfect geometry here. Now let's create a camera. Create cameras, camera. You see that we have a camera, a camera and aim, camera aim it up. We want a, just a simple camera. And the camera sits in the center of the scene and with the camera selected I shift select the helix and then I go to constraint and the constraint menu is not here because it has to do with animation so we need to jump to animation. And here we have constraint and we constrain our camera to a motion path and the motion path is the helix attached to the motion path. Now what you see now is um, the camera starts moving on that motion path. That's already quite perfect. If you have a camera pointing somewhere else, for example not to the inside but to the outside, that's very well possible. It depends on the uh, the way you construct that curve, basically. You go to the motion path here in the attribute editor and you change the inverse front. You see now the camera looks out, which might be interesting too. A helix motion with the camera looking outward, but we want it to look inward. Now let's scale this up and move it up like this. 
and we want the camera to look at the top when it starts the motion. How do we do that? Well, we need something, a goal for the camera to look to. Uh, we want to put it up here, up here and maybe at the end of the animation, down there. So the camera first looks straight up from the helix and when it winds its way up here, it uh, looks down more or less to the middle and then down. How do we do this? Well, we need to create an aim. And when we select the camera here, uh, we have a pull down menu camera and we can now create a camera and an aim. But that is not possible because we need to do something before we invoke this change of camera command here. And uh, the thing is, you can try it out, you get an error message. But um, what we need to do is we go to the camera main node and here you see uh, underlined in yellow, that means it's sort of dependent and it's dependent not only the translation, the, basically the precision, but also the rotation, obviously, it's dependent on the helix. Now, right mouse click here in the rotate field and break the connection, break the connection break the connection and now the camera is not rotating anymore but we can create a rotation now by going back to the camera shape and now we change that camera from a standard camera to a camera with an aim again watch what's happening here in the outliner we get this new node, it's called a camera one group. So the camera became a camera group. Why is that? Let's open that group. Here is the camera. That's what we actually see here, which is linked to that helix. And here's the camera aim. And that sits here in the scene. And when I move it over here, you see the camera changes. Now I want to move this up at the beginning of the animation. That's where we currently are. And for that purpose, I could go, for example, to the side view. So I move it up here. You see how the camera starts rotating up. I can use this as well because here I have a perfect look from the other uh, perspective. So the side and the front are all pointing to the same thing. And uh, from the top, obviously, it's the same anyway. Now I set a keyframe for the position of this node here, the camera aim. So I press S and I get a tick here in red. And now I go to the end of the animation and I move this all the way down. And I set another keyframe. I have auto key on, that means it's set automatically. And now this is the camera animation which I just created. It could not be more elegant than this. Since you have construction history here, you can now change that, the height of your helix. Just move it up and the camera will follow. It's not a problem at all. If you don't want to start below the surface, let's go to one of the side windows and select the both objects here, the curve and, and the uh, cone and move them up. This does not change the motion of your camera, it just follows that instruction. So the key things in this tutorial is you exploit geometry, a helix, a surface, to get this elegant curve. Then you attach the camera to that curve and then you change that camera to a camera with an aim and you can animate or position the aim anywhere you like. Have a nice day. Bye bye.